Tourists have been asking for a quick short-term solution to deal with traffic and safety at Laniakea for decades. Concrete barriers were put in place, then removed. Concrete concerned community members, excuse me, want them back, and the State Department of Transportation says that there are three ways that that can happen. Nikki Shenfeld follows up. Sam, the state, lawmakers, and the majority of North Shore residents want to see the concrete barriers put back. They say it worked to ease traffic and prevent people from darting across the highway constantly throughout the day. But the attorney for the Laniakea lawsuit tells me the barriers didn't even need to come down in the first place. In 2013, concrete barriers went up to address the same issues that stand today. Backed up traffic and safety hazards for pedestrians. Due to lack of permits and blocking public access to a beach, a group sued, won, and the barriers came down in 2015. Fast forward to this year. A 10-year-old boy was hit by a car while crossing the highway at Laniakea. The state said they believed it wouldn't have happened if the barriers were up. And this week said there were three ways that the barriers could come back. One way was to make sure that we get the permitting done. <clears throat> Going through the, the new permitting processes that the court had, had indicated that we should go through. That includes getting a shoreline certification through the Board of Land and Natural Resources. If the certification is approved by the board, then there's a potential that there's a contested case that could be held, which could delay it another two years. The second option could come from the city, who owns a small parcel once intended to be built as a support park for Laniakea on the Malka side. They could let us know that there is no park there, there's not going to be any park there. So if we place the barriers in that area, they're okay with it. City Council Member Heidi Suniyoshi tells me there are no plans for a park there. She sent a memo on Wednesday to the city's park director asking to pass that message along to the DOT within the next several days. The third is the plaintiffs could drop the case so that the court doesn't have jurisdiction anymore and we could replace the barriers as well. The attorney says that's not going to happen and says the barriers didn't have to come down in the first place. They just wanted some of the barriers to move to create an entrance and exit so people could still park. When the judge agreed with us and entered the injunction, he said he would be willing to modify it if the parties agree on something that's like a halfway measure. And they said, okay, we can do that, but it'll take us some time to get the engineering done. The engineering wasn't done and the barriers were pushed back to where they sit today. It's very simple. It can be done tomorrow, really. Just get some forklifts out there and move those barriers back. And while the plan sounds simple and safer by forcing pedestrians to cross the highway at the two openings, the DOT tells me they can't prescribe use of private and city land, adding that the barriers are low to the ground and people could still step over them to cross the highway. And we will follow up with the city's request to the DOT for now. The DOT says they will work on a smaller realignment which would widen the shoulder on the Mackay side for parking so people won't have to cross. That will cost six to eight million dollars and would take up to four years to complete. Sam. Nikki, thank you for following up.